I'm hoping to make this the best and most concise video on fields you will ever see. A mathematical set, F, is a field, and it has these two operations, usually addition, if x and y are elements, x plus y is an operation, and also multiplication, x times y. So it has these two operations equipped, and then we need to satisfy these following axioms. They're called field axioms, and I'm just gonna start listing all of these axioms. Number one, if x is in f, and y is in f, take two elements in f, well then their sum, their addition has to be in f. f has to have x plus y in it. In, in other words, I can use this addition. Sometimes this is called closure under addition. Number two, for all x and y in f, x plus y had better be the same thing as y plus x. Sometimes we call this commutativity of addition. Number three, for every x, y, and z in f, x plus y in parentheses plus z had better be the same thing as x plus parentheses y plus z. This is called associativity of addition. The way I make my parentheses shouldn't really matter here. Number four, there exists some element in F, I'm gonna label it like this, because we're gonna call it a zero. There exists a zero in F such that, I'll say ST for such that, such that zero plus X is the same thing as X, which is also the same thing as X plus zero. And I guess I really didn't need to write this X plus zero if we already have commutativity of addition, but this is this is for all x in f, of course. Right, if I add zero to anything, it's not doing anything. I should just get itself. And this is the additive identity. Very nice. Number five, for all x in f, there exists another element, I'll call it minus x, which is also in F such that X plus that minus X gives us zero. Or you could say minus X plus X is zero. Again, I don't really need this last one if I'm already assuming commutativity of addition, but this is our additive inverse. So all these things should be very familiar if you've taken anything in abstract algebra or if you've seen this before, but if not, that's okay. We do need to rigorously define these things. You know, it might seem very obvious that, well, of course, x plus minus x is zero and zero plus x is x, but you know, if you're building these things from the ground up, we have to make some assumptions. Let's move on to the multiplication ones. Number six. Very similar here. If you know these first five, you probably know what the next five are gonna be. If x is in f and y is in f, any two elements, well then we have to have x, y also being in f. This is called closure under multiplication. I need their multiplication to be in there. In other words, I need to use this multiplication operation. Number seven, let's just keep going with our pattern for all x and y in f. x times y is the same as y times x. Again, that's our commutativity. This time it's commutativity of multiplication. Number eight, following our pattern here. For all x, y, and z in f, you guessed it, we're gonna do the associative property x times y times z with the parentheses this way, well, it means the exact same thing as parentheses x, y times z. This is associativity of multiplication. The way I order these parentheses should not matter. Number nine, there exists some element in f, I'm gonna label it as a one. One times x is the same thing as x, 
which is the same thing as x times 1. Or if I multiply anything by 1, I should just get itself. This should be true for every x in f. Okay, this is our multiplicative identity, as it's called. Now, I will make one slight distinction here. I am assuming that 0 is not equal to 1 here. I'm assuming that this additive identity is not the multiplicative identity. I'm assuming those are different, you know, just for argument's sake. And then very similar here that for every single x in f, and this I really do have to make a distinction that this x is not 0 as well, not the additive identity. For every x in our field, for every element in our field, there exists a 1 over x in f, our multiplicative inverse. And this is such that x times 1 over x gives us 1, or of course, 1 over x times x should be the same thing. And you might say, of course, well, these x's would just cancel out and I'll get 1, but I need to say this. And there's um, a very last one which kind of ties these two operations together. You and I would know it as the distributive law, that for every x y and z in our field, x times y plus z in parentheses should be the same thing as x times y plus x times z. That's called the distributive law, and you could write this a different way if you wanted to. In the next video, we'll talk about properties of ordered fields.